Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome to episode three of my vlog. And in this one, we're going to be playing one, two again down here at Orange City in Florida. And this is an interesting one, not only because I'm running a little bit good in terms of prefab hand selection in quite a few of these vlog episodes, but we also caught some sets in this one. Not one, not two, but three of them. So stick around, see if you like the lines, and let's go through some strategy talking about some one, two live cash game hands. All right. In our first hand, we have pocket eights. This is very early on in the session on the button, cut off open limps, I attack to 15, totally standard sizing, I don't see much reason to go smaller, definitely not going to limp behind, and don't see much reason to go larger either. And I'm getting called by the small blind, get called by the big blind as well, and on action, cutoff to size default, I will never understand this. If your whole thing is to open limp, especially from like the cutoff, you're expecting to get involved in a multi-way pot, you get a multi-way pot, albeit a little bit more expensive than your $2, I don't understand why you would ever fold there, but I digress. So flop comes out, ace, nine, eight, two diamonds. I'm sorry, two clubs. I decide to fire 425 after both players check to me. And this is one where at one, two could probably be a little bit larger, something like 30 or 35, just because one, two players tend to be a little bit more inelastic with their draws and also get a little more sticky with things like ace X as well. So this definitely leaves a little bit of money on the table and is a little small as far as I'm concerned. So the big blind finally folds after tanking for what felt like about two minutes. Turn is the ace of hearts. They check. And this is one where I think a lot of players would heavily consider checking this behind, hoping that their opponents improve on their draw and I don't see much reason to do that. Now, in this situation, fire for 56, our opponent ends up mucking 7-6, so they had the butt side of the draw, and they fold. And it is what it is. I mean, sometimes you're not going to end up getting the draw to continue here, but one of the worst things you can do is just check this behind, hope that they improve for free. A lot of players, again, will draw massively incorrectly, especially at this limit, so make sure to fire. Maybe it's not 56, maybe the bet's actually 45, whatever it is. Do not check this. If you bet it, you can set it up for a much, much bigger pot on the river, really trying to get stacks inside, especially when they have a sticky ace or a flush draw or any sort of draw that improves on the river. Do not, do not miss this turn bet. It is crucial that you hit it. All right, so we end up doing it, win a small little medium pot, and onward to the next hand, and yet again, it's a set. Right, about 15 minutes later, this hand comes up. I'm in the big blind. There's a limp by our friend to the left under the gun. There's a raise to 10. Small blind calls we call as well, and it's not like the greatest stack size in the world in order to set mine, but we do have a little bit of extra depth against the under the gun limper, who's almost certainly going to come along as well, and they do, and we're going to end up going four way to a flop. And like I already alluded to, we do end up catching a set on this one, which is always nice. So small blind checks in the dark, flop is jack seven six with two diamonds. And I decide to lead here, and I think a lot of players would just consider checking, letting the original Razor go for it, and I understand that, but this is an amazingly good spot to just fire it out yourself, just simply because it applies a lot of pressure to the preflop Razor, who's going to feel obligated most of the time to raise with their really, really strong hands, so the pot starts bloating very, very quickly. And also, the person who limped under the gun is going to have a lot of hands that for 15, they're going to be like, hey, I should probably peel one off and go from there. So you end up getting like a lot of stickiness. And even the original Razor, who might have things like pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, or weaker pairs, whatever, that won't always see bet when you check to them. So this guarantees that money gets in on this street, which is always good for business. And it's going to do a lot, a lot of really good things. So this is a great spot to go for the lead instead of just going for the typical check like most players will here. And the size was small, 15 into roughly 40, but it doesn't need to be all that large. So under the gun calls, MP2 raises up to 55 total, small blind gets out of the way, and I decide to call here. And some players would consider three betting this, but what does three betting really accomplish? You're gonna make the big home run pot against the original Razor, and I think you're letting EP1 or the end of the gun player play way too perfectly if you just decide to go for the three bet on the flop. So this player shoves it all in on the turn, which is a brick four. Obviously decided to call this off, no reason not to. I actually call it before he even gets his chips in the middle, and he mucks it, and nice and easy. So end up shipping another pot with a set, and yeah, we, we might end up getting stacks in anyway when our opponent has something like an overpair, but this is just a really, really good spot 
to, again, go for that flop bet. It's going to do so many good things for you in the long run. You might be surprised, especially if you never consider going for that play. So hopefully that helps. And without further ado, let's jump on to hand number three. A little while later in the session, we are under the gun. Look down at pocket tens. Decide to open raise, of course, and go to six. This is a pretty typical open raise size in this game, especially with a 200 max buy. It plays a little more shallow. This is totally fine. So we get two new players into the game that are both very, very new to poker. At least it looks like they're very new to poker in pretty much every single hand. Very, very calling station-y. And in this hand, that is going to be middle position and also the button. So we end up getting called by everybody who has position on us and none of the blinds. So I end up going, what, one, two, three, four, five, five way to it. Always a fun spot when you have pocket tens. And dealer finally gets change set up aside. Ba -ba -ba. Flop is king, queen, ten with two clubs. So very, very wet. And decide to fire out pretty quickly for 20. This should have been probably a little bit larger. I think 25 would be better. Just, again, how these players are playing. I think this leaves just a little bit of money on the table, but end up getting called by EP2 and MP pretty quickly. Button continues as well. And what was five players now becomes four players. Turn card is a five of diamonds, which is a card that I'm very, very happy with. Much better than some of the other possible turn cards. Take a moment and fire out for 60, and you see it gets snap called by EP2, it just reaches over and matches the bet, doesn't even count it out, doesn't even know what it is. And this is one of those where I think the bet's a little bit small here. I think this could have definitely been something closer to 80 or 90 bucks and would have been much more valuable. Now, obviously, if someone has ace, jack, jack, nine, just going to suck to be us, but... There are so many different kind of hand types that will continue here a lot of the time that will get very, very sticky. Club X, any sort of pair plus draw. I think this could have been a little bit larger. I think 60 is a little small. So I end up getting called by MP as well. Button finally goes away. River is the Jack of Clubs, which is one of the ugliest River cards. I check. They both check very, very quickly. End up showing 10s. Under the gun shows... I'm sorry, under the gun plus one. Ends up showing King Queen. And we end up shipping a nice little pot after a middle position decides to muck it. So everything in this hand is, is okay, except for that. I think turn sizing is a little bit too small. You know, this is one of those things where, again, reviewing hands, very, very good for pointing these kind of things out. Make sure to double check your sizing. I think here just got a little bit lazy. 60 is not it. Go a little bit larger, and I think it's going to make much more value in the long run. And obviously, nastiest river card in the world. I can't see any way that we could possibly bet that, so check it and make some decisions from there. And without further ado, let's jump on to the next hand. Quite a while later in the session, look down at pocket jacks. We are over in the hijack. There's a limp from the under-the-gun player who is one of those really kind of new players that I was mentioning earlier. Folds around to me. I make it 10. This should have been 15. This is too small. I, I don't know why I went 10 here as opposed to the larger size, especially isolating a weaker, terrible player. End up getting called by both the players to the left, including one of the other, again, kind of new to poker kind of players. The original limper calls as well. Nothing too, too shocking or surprising at this point. Flop. Uh, unfortunately, does not give us another set. Check from early position. Flop is 10 9 4 rainbow. So obviously going to be continuation betting here. I chose 19 here. This is really a hand with some some serious bet sizing issues. I'm not really sure why why I chose 19 here. I think I may have miscalculated the pot. Like this is just way too small. This should be 25, 30 again against players like this that are massively inelastic. Any pair is going to look good. Any draw. I mean these players were calling like ace five here for for one. Like regardless of size. This is just far too small. This is a really, really big mistake. So end up getting called in every single spot. Again, kind of proofing out why this was not such a good size. End up getting a five of hearts on the turn. Check from the under the gun player. And I lead for 45. And again, mistake. This should have been larger. Now, yes, these kind of players, they can definitely have things like 10-5, 9-5, two-pair that they slow played on the flop. They can have pretty much any single two-pair combination, even though most good players or even reasonable players would not end up having those kind of hands. 
but they can also have lots and lots of different drawing hands as well and sticky single pairs and this again just needs to be larger totally for value so end up getting called only by the under the gun player river is the ace they check and i think a lot of players at this point would consider just checking behind even though there's not that much money left but this is one where you 100 percent have to go for it like you have to against a player like this they will call with second best hands he snap calls it and ends up mucking i think he actually ends up showing a 10 but yeah this is one of those where like you can't miss that river bet like this can just print an hourly for you making sure that you maximize that value against those weaker players who are going to be inelastic and just cannot find the full button with a pair but again a lot of bet sizing mistakes in this hand it's very very good that we're going for that bet on the river but the preflop size is too small flop size is too small turn size again is too small this is a really really big blunder on my behalf and something i need to make sure i'm not getting lazy on going into future sessions so that's this hand let's move on to the next one so this is that point in the session that every single live player is going to relate to you look down at your stack you have a nice big healthy stack you made some profit that's all well and good very very above hourly and you've been playing for a few hours already mm, should you just lock up the win walk away be done call it a nice one and, and go home or you look around the table and you're like well there's still soft spots in the game and they're still reloading and there's still definitely opportunity here so do i continue playing or do i just lock it up well, I decided to continue playing, hoping that this is going to be not just a good session, but a great session. So let's continue and see exactly how this whole thing runs out. Okay, a little while later, we are under the gun and look down at Queen Jack of Diamonds. End up raising to six. By this point, we've already been giving some of our big stack back, just losing a bunch of small size pots, just, just kind of adding up. Obviously, this is a little bit loose from under the gun, but I'm happy with it overall, and pretty much my overall mentality is if it's a close spot, then just take it because it's good for the vlog. So I'm doing this for y'all. End up getting called by both of the new to poker players, our buddy to the left, and pretty much every other person. I think one guy folded here, so we end up going six way to it. And check in the dark by the small blind. Flop is 10, 9, 9 with two diamonds, so floppy open into straight flush draw end up c-betting for 20 which you could definitely make an argument for checking this as well but i think the bet is okay and the size is fine as well end up getting called by the guy in the small blind who i'm gonna classify as well he looks like keith richards but with sunglasses on so do whatever you want with that information <laughs> he checks in the dark on the turn and i check behind on a 10 of spades now the one thing i'll add here just because i think it's a little important for context is there is a high hand promo every single time i've played here there's always this promo i don't know if it's just because the time of day i play but i have played on fridays saturdays and sundays and it always seems to be running they have a high hand promo for 500 and that runs i think every half hour so at this point there's like a couple minutes left in it and if i end up hitting the straight flush i am going to have the high hand at the moment and chances are i'll win the 500 so having the a hand like this is actually a little bit interesting because you do have the open in a straight flush draw if I were to fire the turn and he check raises with 10x, that puts me in hell because I don't get to see my, my river card. And if I check behind, I get to see the river card, which could give extra value on top of not only winning the pot, but also the high hand promo. Most of the time, I'm not going to suggest people freak out or make a bunch of strategic overhauls about high hand promos but this is one of the rare spots where i'm considering it at least slightly and you can make an argument for firing the turn for sure get things like pocket sevens pocket eights or you know other diamond draws other straight draws to go away here but at this point i just went for the check behind instead see if we can improve on the river unfortunately we do not river is a seven of clubs he does not check in the dark this time and decides to fire out for 35 and this is one of those where what am i really going to do here i mean it seems like a, a pretty easy spot to go for the fold just because am i really going to raise and get him to fold a boat i don't think so and i don't think i can really hero call a queen high I just don't beat quite enough hands so I don't really see any reason to give this action. I just end up showing it because the table just absolutely goes bananas over anything that had a possible chance of winning the high hand promo. And I don't really see much reason to, again, pay this off or, or do anything that much different, especially on the river. So he ends up taking a moment and shows us a nine. And we rock and roll and go onward to the next hand. 
Hopefully the next one will win, but at this point it's been kind of a downward coaster and I'm not holding my breath. Right, a little while later we look down at King-10 off. There are two limpers to our right. We attack to 20. At this point the bigger size seemed necessary in order to accomplish any sort of preflop fold equity whatsoever, at least from some of the limpers. End up getting called by our two buddies to our left. The player on the button is our guy who really, really enjoys uh, poker, but is quite new to it, or at least seems to be. End up getting called by the original limper, and the other guy comes along as well. So, zero fold equity, even for 20. LOL live poker. So, flop comes. King 9-3 with two hearts. Two checks to me. But for 25, a little bit small. This definitely could have been something closer to 35-40. I think it's just a little small against these players, especially on such an uncoordinated board. We end up just getting called by the button, again, that new to poker player. Turn is a three of spades, and obviously that can improve some of his hands, but I see zero reason to check there. But for whatever reason, I make an absolutely horrific bet size and only fire it for 30 into 153. This is just way too small. I don't know what the heck I'm doing here with the size. I just, I can only blame brain farting, but I really have zero idea why I chose 30. So many, so many second best hands can continue and get sticky. I mean, any 9x for sure. If he has something like fives or pocket fours, I think he's still going to get very, very comfortable and sticky, even for something closer to 60 bucks. I think 30 is just way, 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 way too small. And I don't really see any reason or any real justification for this size. So bad on James, but we end up getting called pretty quickly. River is the nine of clubs, so making things even worse. I check, he checks behind very quickly, and unfortunately he ends up showing us King Jack. So he ends up pipping me out and end up losing this pot as well. But this is one of those tricky ones where like, you can make an argument for trying to go for thin value on the river. You know, maybe you get called by ace X of hearts kind of hands or something like a worse king. And he can have things like king five, king four. I mean, he's shown up with all that kind of stuff before. But the nine obviously is really brutal because that improves all of those nine X hands you were trying to go for value from on the flop and turn. Same thing with the three X hands. So, eh. I think you can make an argument for trying to make a small bet on the river. I thought going for the check was going to be better. Saved me a little bit of money in this exact instance. It is what it is. But yeah, uh, my sizing here is, is just pretty brutal. And normally, if I'm being more rigid with myself, when I start making very, very clear bet sizing mistakes, I tend to rack up. In this instance, I didn't because, again, the game was just very, very soft. But this is kind of a telltale and one that you should probably look for as well. If you start making really big blunders like this, Probably time to, at minimum, go take a walk, if not possibly rack up and call it a session. But that is what it is. Let's move on to the next hand and see how things go. All right, a little later on in the session, we are on the button. Two limps. We look down at ace-king of diamonds. Very, very pretty hand. Obviously going to attack and just go to 20, because again, 20 seems to be doing good things so far. The small blind calls. The big blind, who is that new to poker guy, folds, which is a little shocking, but at this stage in the game, he had started tightening up a little bit. End up getting called by both of the limpers and go to a roughly $80 pot. Flop is ace-5-4, giving us a top pair and backdoor flush draw. Three people checked us. And I fire off here for 25 this is one where 25 should do just, just fine. And I'm getting check raised very quickly by the guy to my left, up to 55 total. And this sucks. Obviously, we're not going to fold. The price is just really, really good. This is someone who hasn't really been raising very much post-flop. He has been making a lot of comments about trying to win some pots off of me. He's even been pre-tipping dealers in order to try to get that accomplished. So I have to keep that in mind, but there are definitely some red flags here for sure turn is a three of diamonds he checks to me and considered going for a fire here but honestly i don't really think the bet is going to do a tremendous amount if he has something like two pair all that stuff's continuing and i don't think i can like barrel this whole thing off and get him to fold something like again two pair or a set or anything like that so i don't see much reason to go for the turn bet even though obviously it's great giving us that backdoor flush draw I just decided to go for the check behind and go forward from there. And the river is the seven of spades. 
he fires for a 35. Obviously, we're getting about a billion to one here, so never going to be folding. If he ends up having, again, the two pair of the set, it just is what it is. And unfortunately, he does end up showing us exactly that. Shows us pocket fives and end up losing. So, lose another one with a str pretty strong hand. But you know what? This guy finally got me, so nice job. Now, without further ado, let's go on to the last hand of the session and see if we can continue this awesome, awesome streak of losing every single pot. Okay, so literally the exact next hand, look down at King-10 off in the cutoff. It folds around to us. Yep, still King-10 offsuit. Decide to open raise to six. I just didn't have any small chips with me. The big blind, I'm sorry, the button folds. The small blind is a different player than the previous hands because the new to poker player decided to take a break in the middle of the last one. So small blind, three bets this. Eventually up to 18. And this isn't great. I mean, stack sizes are not... I'm not super enamored with this by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not the largest three bet size. I do have position. This guy had three bet a couple times, so I'm not 100% sure if this is always going to be on the strong side of things. I'm just, again, if it's close, I'm, I'm continuing with it. The flop comes King 10 7 Rainbow. And at this point, if they see bet and they do end up see betting for 20, I'm just going to call. I don't really see much reason to raise. If they have a bluff, give them a chance to continue with it. If they have a strong hand, then let them continue with it. I don't think he's just randomly going to get away from a strong hand going into turns of rivers. And if he has a draw and he improves, is what it is, but it won't happen all that often. So turn is the Ace of Hearts. Not my favorite card in the entire world. And he ends up jamming it for 88. And I just snap call it. If... You know, he can have things like ace-jack, ace-queen, and he can also have the exact hand he had, which is ace-king. But again, like it's not like I'm going to fold, so just snap call it and keep action moving along and keep the string of losses moving along as well. It's just kind of one of those suck spots. Given the smaller size three bets, I don't really see too much reason to fold preflop, again, with position. In different situations, different spots, different starting hand, totally different conversation, but here... Just going to have to pay it off. Just is what it is. So I ended up playing for just a little bit longer and then ended up calling it quits and heading back on home. It was about one in the morning at this point, and I was definitely starting to get a little bit tired and a little bit sloppy. So that's usually a good time to call it quits. And it's always a little frustrating when you find yourself in this kind of session where you build up a nice healthy stack early on. and You're like, eh, should I just lock it up? But if the game is soft, if the game is really good, I definitely suggest pushing through it as much as you can until your edge starts uh, maybe dwindling to a place where it's not necessarily where you want it to be. So at the end of the day, we ended up making $131 profit after four and a half hours of playing. So $29 hourly, 58 BB per hundred on the win rate. Not too, too bad, all things considered. But don't get frustrated and get really, really upset with yourself for not quitting earlier if it's a good game continue on through it and that is going to conclude episode three of this vlog hopefully you enjoyed if you have any comments or questions please don't hesitate to let me know and of course a like would be super appreciated on the video if you enjoyed it and you want to see more i do have episode four planned we decided to take a jump up to two five in this one unfortunately i wasn't able to get any footage but we're still doing something fun with it you'll see that shortly hopefully in the next couple or few weeks if you need anything give me a heads up otherwise as always good luck out there and happy grinding.